my channel. So today I want to officially introduce you to my better half. His name is? Tony. Okay, we went to the thrift store a couple of days ago together and we were looking at um, stuff that we could use for home decor that we could recycle. Okay, so we're going to Savers. I'm gonna go see if we can find some vases. Okay, so I am looking at all these vases and I'm not seeing anything I like. They're all really small. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just looking at these baskets. They do have cute baskets, but I don't need any. Savers? Ooh. Flop. Okay, so Savers was a total flop. Um, Their prices were more than new. <laughs> they were. They were pretty expensive. One more stop. Goodwill. Goodwill knows what's up. They have so many vases to pick from. Look what we found! Just what we were looking for. We wanted something straight up and down. Tony's saying this one because he likes the squarish look. I'm thinking that one. We came across some beautiful glassware that we want to transform. He has a few ideas that he will be showing you guys. Well, mine will be better. Uh, yeah, so vote Team Tony or Team Lily. Anyway, <laughs> um, we'll be showing you a few ideas. Let's get started. Okay, guys. First off, we're going to start with this vase, the smaller one. So this right here is contact paper. We got it on Amazon for pretty cheap. So if you're not familiar with the blog, Lily usually adds all the supplies on there. She'll add a link in the description. Feel free if you guys want to check it out. I already marked the contact paper on the inside about four, three, four inches higher than the vase so I could fold it inside the vase that way you don't see that glass inside now let's remove this backing and just try to attach this paper to the vase I think I'm just gonna roll it on because it's probably gonna be a fail but let's try it so I rolled it on and I just rubbed my hand through it until I found the seam and then kind of put my fingernail to it and went down and then just followed that with the razor blade. So guys, when you roll it onto the vase, you could totally just overlap the seam and just cut it wherever. It's almost invisible. So guys, I'm looking at the vase and it looks pretty bad. Got a bunch of bubbles on it and it looks hilarious. But it's an easy fix. I peeled it off and just slowly work it back and forth up and down the vase and it's churning out pretty good. Now I need to figure out how to fold this paper inside the vase. So I decided I'm just gonna cut slits in it and fold one slit at a time into the vase. So I'm noticing the smaller slits turns out way nicer around the edge of the vase. So cut about half inch and smaller. It takes a little bit more time, but it looks so much better, a lot neater. And I think that's it. So at this point I was done and Lily thought it was too shiny. So she decided to brush on some Mod Podge. It comes on a little white, but it dries clear. And it made the wood, faux wood just a little matte. So overall, you guys, I thought this DIY was pretty easy to do. And it looks pretty darn good. What do you guys think? Better than Lily's vase? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my turn. Um, so this is the glass vase that I will be working with. Um, for this project, I was inspired by something I found at Pier 1 Imports the other week. Okay, so I'm at Pier 1 Imports and um, I found this vase that I'm looking at. It is so stinking cute. I love these colors. Okay, so I really want to get that same effect on my vase and I've been thinking a lot and I came to the conclusion that um, green split peas would probably work best for this. Walmart sells them for under $2. Um, I know they sell like wood beads, but I didn't have any luck finding tiny ones like this. I'm going to attempt to glue them onto the vase with this Gorilla Glue. It says it's made for glass. I've never tried it, but we'll give it a go. I think I'm going to apply a dab of glue onto some paper first. I feel like this might be easier. 
Um, and now I'm gonna use my tweezers to pick up the beads and dip them into the glue before attaching them to the vase. Oh my gosh, you guys, so it's been like five minutes and this glue isn't really setting fast enough, which is making the beads slide around. I'm just going to remove all these beads and try another glue. Okay, so I have this E6000 glue. Let's give it a go. It also says that it should work on glass. Ooh, and I love that this one is actually much thicker. I think it'll help the beads stay in place better until they dry. Okay, so I'm definitely liking this E6000 glue a lot more than the previous glue I tried. It seems like it's holding the beads in place before it's even dry, so that's nice. I'm just gonna keep going with this one. So I'm done with one side, and I'm loving the way the polka dot effect is looking, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three sides. This took me about 10 minutes to do, and this vase is not super big, so if you're working with a bigger vase, it might take you a little bit longer, um, but overall, I wouldn't say it's super bad. So once you get the technique down, it goes pretty quick. Like once I figured out that I can pick them up from the jar and dip them into the glue like that, it went pretty quick. Snowing outside. We're gonna take the pot to the garage and spray paint it. Keep walking around in circles. Why not? Make sure you're wearing a mask while spray painting. Or work in a well ventilated area. <laughs> and here's what it looks like after we spray painted it yesterday. Um, a lot of the beads are actually falling off. And I think what happened was that um, the spray paint um, let some of the moisture from the beads come out and it like deactivated the glue, or at least the beads that didn't have enough glue are falling off. It seems like the beads that had plenty of glue are actually holding, holding on really well. Okay, so I decided not to glue the missing beads back on because I'm actually curious to see how it'll turn out if the beads look more abstract versus patterned. I'm just spray painting it again and once it's dry, I'll be ready to antique it. Yay, we're finally ready to antique it. I feel like this DIY has so many hiccups. Okay, um, for my antiquing, I have this pale gray chalk paint from Walmart. I'm going to try and brush it onto the vase. I'm using a very, um, soft bristle brush and I'm just gently dipping a tiny bit of paint onto the brush and then um, removing some of it onto a piece of paper before dry brushing it onto my vase. Wow, so I'm not seeing much of a difference with this gray at all actually. I went ahead and pulled out some of this darker gray. Let's try this one out. I'm using the same method to apply it and I'm seeing a slight difference, just the look I'm going for. It also seems like when I apply the paint in circular motions, it helps get around the beads better. So I guess that's something you can keep in mind. Okay, now to make the beads pop again, I'm dipping this foam brush into some white acrylic paint and gently applying it onto the beads. Okay, so I am pretty much done at this point, but I decided I'm gonna go ahead and give it a coat of this gloss clear coat. I wanted to share one more thing. So right here on the bottom, I applied clear coat in super thick layers on this side. And as you can see, it's all like cracked up and the texture just looks horrible. Unless you like this like cracked look and then apply your clear coat in thick layers, but otherwise nice and thin layers and you'd probably need about three layers. That's it, here's how it looks set up in our living room. I'm in love with the chic look it has. Real quick, I just wanna show you guys both sides. So this side, as you can see, has way less beads and I actually like this side more because it gives it like a cleaner look. And then if you turn it around, this side has way more beads. But I feel like this one's a little bit too much for my taste. 
is definitely a very different style from Tony's vase and honestly I'm kind of digging his vase a little bit more than mine. Still can't believe those glass vases aren't real wood. Which one do you guys like more? Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in everyone. Let me know if you would love to see more videos like these. Give us a thumbs up if you liked this video and found it inspiring. Subscribe if you're not already and we'll see you all next time. Bye. I want to officially introduce you to my better half. His name is? Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> Something really ugly probably, I don't know. I'm done. Okay, cut. Oh, we weren't recording the whole time. <laughs> I can see the red button. <laughs> and cut.